Welcome to this edition of Atlanta Live. I'm Ann White, and we're visiting today with a very special guest who is going to encourage you and I in our hope and faith walk. Please join me in welcoming founder of Hope for the Heart and one of the world's leading biblical counselors, June Hunt. June, thank you so much for being with us today. It's such an exciting day for me to meet you. I've quoted you several times in my book. You've inspired many, many people. You've helped many people and encouraged many people. And um, wow, it's just a pleasure to be here. I love being with you. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel very honored. Well, that's wonderful. And, and so tell me, how did this all begin with you? Where did you begin? Um, well, let's talk about your faith journey. Let's start there. And how did God just get a hold of your heart? Well, as uh, someone once told me uh, while, when I was an adult, June, you were a blank page. Mm -hmm. You just knew nothing. And uh, so I was, I, I actually was raised in a church, but no one took a Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the pastor always started with two jokes and there was always a middle joke. Not that I always was <laughs> attuned to that one, uh -huh. but um, then I got around what I would call authentic Christians. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what is it that they have? There's something, I was very drawn, mm -hmm. and they would say things like, uh, June, there's a difference between having a religion right. versus a relationship, and that Christianity is a relationship with Christ. And I, I wasn't opposed to what they were saying. Mm -hmm. I just didn't really comprehend it. I, and, and I uh, you know, would hear these other people quoting scriptures uh, at this other church. Right. In fact, everybody took a Bible. And the amazing thing is they could go and with no tabs. How right. could they find out where they were going? <laughs> I, thought, I thought this right. is like a magic trick. Right. I literally thought that. I thought, wow. And, and I thought, I, I want what they have, well, what they have is information. They have mm -hmm. all this information. They know all these scriptures and all this stuff about the Bible. And well, they didn't have just information. Right. They had transformation, right. which I didn't understand. But I, I, I did believe, I, I remember uh, being asked, are you a Christian? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Well, I did believe. Mm -hmm. Now, I also believe in George Washington. I believe mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln. They are not impacting my life, and I've right. never given my life to them. Right. And I didn't understand that believe means to rely upon, to trust in, in the mm -hmm. Bible. It's not just mental assent. And so as I was listening and watching, I, I could see th th there's something I just had not been exposed to. Mm -hmm. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord means master, ruler, owner. I, I've never asked Christ to take charge of my life or to uh, literally give him the uh, opportunity to be Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't understand. And, you know, I'm in high school and I'm being analytical. Love math. Math makes sense. Yep. And so I asked, I math uh, as well. did you? Okay, we're, yep. we're analytical. Yep. And, and I could care less about <laughs> English, but, yeah, you know. Okay, we're on the same page you know, again there. Yeah, well, but, 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 you know. <laughs> it's necessary, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, I ended up thinking, why have I written these books? Well, these are math yeah. equations. They're, they're problems, mm -hmm. and problems have solutions mm -hmm. in math. So we've got to make sure we're giving the solutions. Right. Well, for me, I was uh, back in a mystery phase of, of what is this that I'm seeing? And um, so I went to a, someone, a woman who was a Bible teacher. Uh -huh. Now, I'd never cared about Sunday school or anything before, but when she taught, I would, I would think, why did she stop? It's only been 20 minutes, I'm, you know, been 45, and I'm going, I've never heard the Bible taught in power. Wow. So I went to her, I said, how do I know if I'm a Christian? I think I am. Mm -hmm. And I was sincere. I was also sincerely wrong, but, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I, I, and you, but you knew, you, knew, you knew there was something that you were missing that these others had. Well, and they were drawing you in, and that's so often the case. Yeah, I, and I love it that without even comprehending, it was clear that mm -hmm. I could see I was drawn to the quality of life they had. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I, I, when I asked that question, uh, how can I know if I'm a Christian, the woman wisely said, I can't know your heart as God does. Mm. But if you were not a Christian, would you be willing to do whatever God would want you to do? I thought, what would he want me to do? That's a, a long pause. And, and, and I, I thought, well, what if, what if whatever it is doesn't work? Because I'd seen people pray a prayer right. and walk down an aisle. Right. And I thought, well, what if it doesn't work? I thought, well, I guess it wouldn't work. But what if I didn't at least be willing to mm -hmm. try, you know, and pray a prayer of whatever that really meant? Mm -hmm. And it would have worked, but I refused to do it. Then I would miss whatever they had because I was really drawn to what they had. And so I would love to tell you <laughs> that, oh, I realized my sin. And I, mm -hmm. uh, all I knew was what they had was real because I watched for like six months. Mm -hmm. And I could tell there was a sincerity. It's like they had a well spring of depth mm -hmm. that was very drawing. And so what I heard was basically I needed to humble my heart and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior mm -hmm. and give him control of my life. So I prayed a very simple prayer. You know, Lord, I, I'm asking you uh, to come into my life. Uh, Jesus, I'm asking you to take control of my life and I just give myself to you. I think in our culture today, so much emphasis can be put on the religion, the religious practices, the, you know, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do mm -hmm. this. But I think when someone like you had, you did, and when and this, you were a teenager, right? Because it, it was the same for me at 19 years old. Mm -hmm. When you enter in that to relationship with God, it's different. And you, you realize the difference. I didn't know that I had changed. Uh, the year, a literal 12 months later, uh, I was around some people who had not seen for an entire year, and they said, June, what's, what's different about you? There's mm -hmm. something that's changed. I had no idea what they were talking about. I just said, I, I, I don't know what you mean. And they said, well, there's something different. Then I was, again, with another group that had seen me before, and say, they said the same thing. What, how, why have you changed? You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I had no explanation. So I remember um, as I was going to bed that night, I thought, well, what has changed? What? Well, I became a Christian. Uh, I live for Sundays. I can't wait to learn. I was just mm -hmm. absorbing truth mm -hmm. that I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. I was like a sponge that had never seen water. Mm -hmm. and, and I just loved what I was learning. I, I thought, well, maybe... Maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and so you can change and not know it. Mm -hmm. But in truth, I had, um, I had a lot of unforgiveness. Um, my, my father actually had three families going on at the same time. Wow. And I was actually raised with a fictitious last name. I was June Wright instead of June Hunt, mm -hmm. which my birth certificate said. And, and uh, we were the third family off on the side, and I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't share anything. And mm -hmm. so uh, when I was about um, 12, I remember uh, my father's first wife had died, and so um, he, we moved into his home. And then uh, at the end of the year, about, about 11 months later, my mm -hmm. parents married. And you, th you think, oh, how wonderful. At least then things get right. Well, he was double my mom's age. Uh, he was mm. belittling and mm. cruel at times. And I, uh, I, I hated how he treated her. He treated, your heart. yeah, he treated others too that way. But, but I, I, I you know, not her. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw how my dad treated my mom in yes. a similar yeah. way. That verbal abuse and just emotional disregard. And you don't tell anybody, you know, because you're afraid to tell anybody. Well, how would they understand? Right. I mean, they, 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 when you especially haven't been vulnerable before. Right. And, and so um, 
you know, I so I had this unforgiveness, and, and later I was able to. Uh, and I thought it was wrong since you and I are, mm -hmm. since we're we're logical. Okay. We are. All right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. No. Forgiveness is letting them off the hook. Mm -hmm. It's it feels irresponsible, mm -hmm. and, and so I would hear something about forgiveness, and I, I and I I didn't oppose the Bible. I just thought, but God knows my situation is different. Right. That right. He understands. Right. Now. He understood I was wrong too, yeah, but yeah. but I still believed I was right. Yeah. And, and he had the grace for you to bring you gently along the way until you yeah. found out differently. Well, and and you know, I I remember actually reading a scripture. I thought uh, that if you have hatred, you know, you're still in the darkness. The darkness has blinded you. Mm -hmm. You don't know where you're going. And I thought, but but. God hates sin and dad is sinning. See, mm -hmm. this is my question. God hates sin. Dad is sinning. God hates dad. I hate dad. Mm -hmm. It's an equation. I loved your definition of forgiveness. Now, once you came forward and God really exposed to you what true forgiveness is, mm -hmm. you know, share with the listeners about what forgiveness really is. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it simply means release. Mm -hmm. The word forgiveness is release. Now, to me, I thought it's letting my dad off the hook if I forgave right. him. But it's not. It's releasing all the pain to God mm -hmm. and then taking my father off of my emotional hook, putting him onto God's hook. Right. And God is the one who says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Mm -hmm. So he knows how to deal with those who hurt us, mm -hmm. those who harm us, those who offend us. He, our, our offenders, he will deal with them, but we need to release them to him mm -hmm. or else the battle is with us like this. Yeah, and it tears us down. Yeah, and, and, and you think about uh, just rocks, just heavy rocks, every offense. And, and imagine from your... Uh, your hook, let's say mm -hmm. I have an emotional hook right now on you, and there's a burlap bag right there, mm -hmm. and I've got all these rocks, mm -hmm. you know, boulders, boulders of bitterness and mm -hmm. all. And so we're filling them up every time you tell me something that he did, mm -hmm. anything, whatever it is, mm -hmm. this offender. Well, now you're carrying 90 pounds around mm -hmm. your neck mm -hmm. from this hook. You were never created mm -hmm. to carry that kind of weight. Right. You were never created to carry bitterness. In fact, the, the Bible even says that, that a bitter root, uh, in essence, bears bitter fruit. Mm -hmm. A bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Yes. So we're going to impact many other people mm -hmm. if we carry bitterness. Right. It, never do you see bitterness right in God's sight. Like, like if we're talking about forgiveness, my favorite mm -hmm. verse in unforgiveness is Colossians 3.13. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear. <laughs> Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance mm -hmm. you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Mm -hmm. You know, we all come out of our childhood with some sort of a scar. You know, very few of us ever escape childhood without something, some residual. And so you're counseling through the Bible handbook. You have many resources. You've got numerous, numerous books. Um, and so where can our viewers go and find out more about all the books? And we're going to talk about your latest book here in just a moment. And we also want to know where our viewers can go and hear you at Hope for the Heart. Talk about, um, well, give us your website okay. so they know how to find you. It, it's um, hopefortheheart.org. Uh, it's all there. Quite simple. Just hopefortheheart.org um, or um those who want to call, it's 1-800-488-HOPE. Just 1-800-488 and the letters H-O-P-E. And, uh, and I think that's great that you have that call in because some people are in that moment yeah. of desperation where they need a voice on the other end. I mean, resources are great, but God told us we're to lift one another up and encourage one another. And you have created a ministry that does just that, mm. that allows someone to pick up and hear the voice of someone who will pray with them and encourage them and give them the hope that they need. 
to make it another day. Now let's talk a little bit about your newest book, Trials, God's Refining Fire. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a great handy resource, but tell me why did you write this? It's not uncommon to hear somebody say, this makes no sense. I, I, how could a loving God permit mm -hmm. this? Well, that's, that was my question. How could God permit this? Uh, and, and so I, I didn't, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking the question, why? Right. But there is something wrong in demanding the answer right then. Mm -hmm. Because many times we don't see the plan and purpose for God allowing a, a trial. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I say that um, because I could not at all foresee what God was doing in terms of um, my doing a two-hour nighttime call-in counseling program mm -hmm. called Hope in the Night. People call from all over and they want help and hope. Sure. And, but but I, I think I maybe would have been as deep as a dime or, you know, just to, to have no compassion uh, because if you, if you, unless you've gone through something similar, sometimes it's very hard mm -hmm. to understand or people can kind of tell, well, you really don't understand what I'm saying. Right. And so if you have a lot of pain early on, it really can be more advantageous than later on, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. And and yet uh, the, the issue of, of trials is, is huge. The, the Bible even says we are called to suffer. You know, in First Peter, you think called to suffer. So there is a purification process mm -hmm. within us. There, there are many things that we need for our own lives if indeed we are going through a trial. We, there, there's understanding we need. You have some practical advice in this book. Tell our audience what you supply in here that will give them hope. Okay. And encouragement. Uh, uh, years ago, I heard about in biblical times, there were there were there was a refining process mm -hmm. uh, that refiners used, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they would be putting unrefined gold in a crucible yeah. and putting it to heat, and then uh, the refiner sloughs off the scum, Impurities. the dross, mm -hmm. the dross, and and so I went on and and literally for this book and we, we call them biblical counseling keys that we have a uh, hundred topics. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, but I was stunned and I didn't realize all the scriptures that were in the Bible mm -hmm. about all of this, this refining process. Is that okay to mention several of these? It, absolutely, okay. oh, absolutely okay. it okay. is. Well, there are six stages of refinement, we could say, or five, but the first would be breaking. You've got to break up the rough rock mm -hmm. or the ore. Uh, and so in biblical times, that's what a refiner would do. Mm -hmm. uh, breaking up the hardened rock. And, and there could be gold, silver mm -hmm. strains in there, but it was necessary. Well, listen to what the Bible says. Uh, Jeremiah 23 says, is not my word like fire, mm -hmm. like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. So there's something in it that's going to be positive about fire, mm -hmm. but there has to be a breaking of the rock. Stage number two deals with the crucible. A crucible is a fireproof pot. Mm -hmm. And you, you, the refiner would put these broken pieces of rock, crushed ore, into this crucible and that, that uh, fireproof pot is important because it could, ex uh, could withstand extreme heat. Well, then the refiner places that into the furnace. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Proverbs 17.3, the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, mm -hmm. but the Lord tests the heart. So here we see the intent is to purify our hearts. Right. Stage three the dross. That's where the refiner places the crucible into the heated furnace, furnace to, to, to remove the, the dross. That's that scum on the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 25, 4. I didn't know the word dross was even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Remove the dross from the silver wow. and the silversmith can produce a vessel. 
So for us, dross would be anything that keeps us from being all that God created us to be. It could be bitterness. Mm -hmm. It could be jealousy. It could be envy. It could be uh, just a snippiness, a critical spirit, whatever it is. Now, there's, by the way, the Bible says, your silver has become dross. So, and there's, it, the Bible even talks about uh, rejected silver. Mm -hmm. So what we don't want is to be that which God rejects by virtue of refusing to be right. refined. Number four, the heat. This is where the, the, uh, the refiner raises the temperature. Now, listen, mm -hmm. if you're like me, you're thinking, why am I in this again? Mm -hmm. I, how could I be going through this again? Mm -hmm. and this just doesn't seem right. I, didn't I learn whatever I needed to learn? Did you ever experience no. oh, that? <laughs> I still experience that okay. <laughs> every single day. Well, but I'm learning. This, is so, this was incredibly important to know. When the heat is exposed, it, there's all this heat in the furnace, it extracts the dross. In other words, up flows the dross to the top and this is where the heat is used mm -hmm. to literally continue to bring dross. So, why then would there be at numerous times where God would have us again and again go through the same issue? Mm -hmm. Listen to this. The words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. Mm -hmm. Seven times. Years ago, I had heard something about seven times. Mm -hmm. But what it is is the refiner knows that at times the heat has to be turned up mm -hmm. because only certain impurities are released at certain temperatures. Mm -hmm. The refiner, as he's looking over, first he sees a dim image of himself. Mm. And then as the, the refining takes place, it gets clearer and clearer until finally he sees a clear image of himself. Mm -hmm. And based on Isaiah 48, 10, see, I have refined you, mm -hmm. though not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. But, you know, there's a, a passage I just want to mention yeah. in, in, in Job. He knows the way I take. Mm -hmm. This is Job 23, 10. He knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Mm. So you are gold in the making, pure gold. Mm -hmm. and, and as you think about your own life, you are gold in the making. And, and so we at times don't see what is going on at one point in our lives. We don't even see that, like with me, I had bitterness, I had unforgiveness. I needed to change. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was already changing in other areas, but sometimes we cannot see ourselves mm -hmm. as God sees us. That's a continual process. Yes. You yes. know, with, there's never a point in time that we're not to be growing. And, and that's what I love about you and your resources, because they continue to challenge me. They conti you continue to challenge your readers. You continue to offer them encouragement and hope. And uh, I know you and I could go on and just talk for hours about so many different things. And I know our audience would love to hear the many things that you have to say. And so that's why I'm going to drive them to your website at hopefortheheart.org and give them that 800 number again where they can call in. It's 1-800-488-HOPE, the, the letters H-O-P-E, 1-800-488-HOPE. Wonderful. And they can pick up Trials, mm -hmm. God's Refining Fire, at the same place, hopefortheheart.org. Right. And that's where they'll find just a multitude of resources. And uh, thank you so much for being with us here today, for sharing your heart, for sharing your story, and for sharing all of these invaluable tips that we can implement in our life to help us understand how God is refining us. It's my June. joy. Thank, thank you, you so much. I God love bless being with you. you. Thank it's you. been wonderful. And thank you so much for being with us today. And please join us again. Hi, I'm Ann White. 
And I'd like to invite you to read my new book, Seven Steps to Courage, available at sevenstepstocourage.com. I believe it will empower you to make courageous choices. We all need courage, no matter what we're going through. Courage to face something difficult, to face a diagnosis of a disease that we've just been told we have, or to deal with a troubled relationship and have the courage to heal that relationship and to confront the issues that we've been dealing with. My greatest desire is that my courage will inspire you to have courage to face whatever difficult circumstance or trial that you're going through. I really hope you'll go out and purchase this book and be encouraged and inspired to gain the courage you need to make courageous choices. Thank you.